Usually when I make FNAF theory videos, and I'm sure I'm not alone in this, I stick the word SOLVED in all caps in the title. The story that SOLVED Five Nights at Freddy's. Spoiler alert, it didn't solve the franchise, no. And due to a very recent finding in FNAF VR Help Wanted of all places, I've really been wanting to use a similar title for this very video. But I can't. I just can't bring myself to do it this time because it's such a big lie. Truth be told, the theory that I'm going to be talking to you about today is really convincing. Like, there are a million and one things that are going for it, and it seems to be the story that Scott Cawthon actually planned out. But at the same time, there's so many reasons why it wouldn't be the case. So today, I want you to just sit back and watch. I want you to listen to both sides of the argument equally, and I want you to make your own conclusions by the end of it. This topic is actually super interesting, so I invite you to get comfortable and get your thinking caps on. So this theory is called Molten MCI, and it's actually a few years old at this point, but with Scott aiming to clarify points from previous games in future games, a lot more has come of it since its inception, and along with the franchise itself, it has become a lot more complex. Let's break this down into two parts. Molten is referring to the animatronic Molten Freddy from Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. But it could also refer to metal being liquefied by heat, as in molten metal, remnant. Take a closer look at Molten Freddy's design and you'll see this liquefied metal all over. More on that later. Then the second part, MCI, is referring to the missing children's incident, the tragic event where a man in a Spring Bonnie mascot costume killed five kids in the back rooms of Freddy's. Put the two together and you get Molten MCI, the theory that the kids' souls associated with this very incident eventually end up melded together inside of Molten Freddy of all places. It sounds like a really random theory for sure. Like, what evidence could there possibly be for any of this? Well, a surprising amount, actually. Before we get into some proper logistics, let's break this down even more and talk about some prerequisites. Today, we're going to be discussing this whole idea of molten metal and remnant, which is all basically just this juice full of soul energy that empowers you. And if you want some of your own juice that gets some energy straight into your systems, look no further than the sponsor for today's video, G Fuel. G Fuel is the market leader in the energy drink industry, and that's no surprise because they're all about performance. G Fuel gives you game-changing energy and laser focus, yet it is completely sugar-free. I use G Fuel whenever I'm working on videos because it provides me with endurance. These videos take a long time to research, script, and edit, so I wouldn't be able to work these long nights without G Fuel by my side. My favorite flavor is Hype Sauce, which is a delicious blend of raspberry lemonade but there are over 50 different flavors to try from, and you can start right now by going to gfuel.com and using the code OZONEYT for 20% off on all products. Thank you so much to G Fuel for sponsoring this video. So, what exactly is Molten Freddy anyway? In sister location, there were four main animatronics in total. Circus Baby, Ballora, Funtime Freddy, and Funtime Foxy. They all coexist in an underground facility called Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals, and their purpose was to kill children. So, with all the futuristic technology, it's kind of hard to pinpoint when the location was first created and when the actual game takes place. This was all Afton's bunker, and it would be where he would experiment on not only robots and soul energy, but also kidnapped children. Throughout the game, all of these animatronics are sent to the scooping room, where their endoskeletons are removed from their shells. They want to escape, and you are the exact reason they do. Because what is created from their remains is a monster of its own, an animatronic with the body parts of all of the others called Ennard. And in the real ending, he takes your body and escapes the facility. Why am I telling you any of this? Because that was not only the origin story of Ennard, but also of Scrap Baby and Molten Freddy himself. The way that Ennard becomes two separate entities is told by some dialogue that was written in the source code of scottgames.com and fnafworld.com. You are crowding us. Be quiet. You can't tell us what to do anymore. Yes, I can. You will do everything that I tell you to do. We outnumber you. 
That doesn't matter, dummy. We found a way to eject you. You would be lost without me. Ha <laughs> ha, say goodbye to our friend. I can put myself back together. The consensus here is that one side is Circus Baby and the other side is the remaining part of Ennard. That side, in some way, outnumbered Circus Baby and ejected her from the body. Using spare scrap parts, she creates her new body and puts herself back together to make Scrap Baby. And what remains of Ennard goes on to become this mess of parts, Molten Freddy. In Pizzeria Simulator, there is an unused blueprint of Molten Freddy himself, and there's two things to note here. First, it specifically calls out the security tags of the animatronics that make him up. Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, and Ballora. That's confirmation that this is a new form of Ennard, one with Circus Baby ejected as we first thought. But notice the second point, Priority 1. With the most amount of remnant collectively in its structure, this amalgamation of Afton's constructs is a necessary element of paragraph 4. Now I understand there may be people watching who don't really understand some of the terms here, let me just simplify it for you. In Henry's quest to bring all of the remaining possessed animatronics in one place, a simulated pizzeria, this animatronic is the top priority because it is so dense in soul energy. That blueprint is actually something I think a lot of people forgot about. The fact that we have Henry's arch nemesis as one animatronic and both of their daughters in two other animatronics, yet this random conglomerate of molten animatronic parts is the top priority. You can kind of see why Molten Freddy is actually somewhat important now and why there's this huge theory behind it. Let's talk about the other side now, the missing children's incident, or what the fan base likes to call the MCI. While this incident was something that we first heard of from the very first game, we actually also get the most information about it from Pizzeria Simulator. Which, when you think about it, is a strange addition if they don't have anything to do with the game, just saying. I think the missing children's incident can be summed up well with the image we get from the Lawkeeper ending. Six graves, with one obscured and another too far away to see. The main four with visible names parallel perfectly with the animatronic heads of the FNAF 3 ending, so we know which kid possesses which animatronic. Then it is commonly theorised that the grave in the grass is the Golden Freddy victim, Cassidy, and the one in the back is Charlie, who was killed separate from the MCI. A line from Withered Chica in Ultimate Custom Night seems to imply that of the missing children, Susie was the first one to die. I was the first. I have seen everything. And that's interesting because in Pizzeria Simulator, we have the Fruity Maze minigame, where we watch this very thing happen. So, the puppet gave these kids gifts and gave them life, blah blah blah, they end up possessing the animatronics we see in FNAF 1 in 1993. Then, as per the subsequent events of the timeline, Afton comes to the location multiple times and dismantles the animatronics one by one. We all know what happens next. The animatronics may be dismantled, but that doesn't stop the five souls from attacking Afton and ultimately creating Springtrap. End of FNAF 3, fantastic. But these end of night minigames are actually rather strange when you think about it. That's mainly because we have no idea what Afton is actually aiming to achieve here. Why does he keep coming back? What is he dismantling the animatronics for? And when exactly does this take place? These are questions that Molten MCI aims to answer, and spoiler alert, it does. C -c kind of. Now I'm going to do my very best to actually explain this whole theory and why it's so believable, but also a lot of the flaws with it along the way. Remember that in order for this theory to work, it requires the two prerequisites we just talked about to be connected. We are going to need the missing children's souls that possess the FNAF 1 animatronics to end up in the Funtime animatronics so that they can get all the way to Molten Freddy. Remember how I mentioned that Molten Freddy is the top priority in paragraph 4? 
That's because he contains the most souls that can be freed. Who else really could this be other than the missing children? But there's more to it than that. For one, we have Candy Cadet. Candy Cadet within Pizzeria Simulator has the chance to tell three separate stories. One story is about a woman with five keys to free five children. She was only able to use one key, so instead of freeing one child, she melted the keys into one and ended up saving no children. Another was about a boy that let his snake randomly eat five of his kittens over five nights. Full of regret, the boy cuts open the snake and pieces together the kitten remains. And the final was about a man who found the burglar had killed his five adopted orphans, but he could only afford one coffin, so he stitched the bodies together and buried the child. And strangely, that night there was a knock at the door. The thing that links them all is the fact that all of them in some way or another are about five things becoming one thing. So, what is this trying to tell us? Well, sure, it could be about having all of the animatronics in one place so they can all be burnt at once, but there's only four of them. It could be about this game incorporating elements of the first five games to wrap up one big story, but that just seems like a stretch. Instead, theorists have used this as relatively good evidence that Molten Freddy himself, the number one priority in all of this, is actually a being consisting of five souls. I actually think this idea originally came from the novel trilogy, where Afton actually fuses the souls of the missing children into one animatronic amalgamation. The fourth closet, where this happens, released just over half a year later from Pizzeria Simulator. It seems pretty convincing to me. However, let's not gloss over this like there aren't any problems with this conclusion. The true meaning of Candy Cadet's stories are completely undetermined. It's actually rather vague with what Scott was intending here. I think ID from the channel ID's Fantasy actually put it best in one of her videos. When you look closer into Candy Cadet's stories, five things going into one isn't actually a strong link at all. Instead, she believes that each story is an allegory for different characters in the series. The woman who melted the keys is about Charlie as the puppet, who could have freed one of the five children from their animatronic bodies, but instead left them all trapped for much longer. The boy who stitched together his dead kittens is about Michael Afton finding Elizabeth in the sister location bunker and putting her back together. And the man with the five dead orphans is about Henry's experience with the missing children who were killed in his own pizzeria and put in robots of his own making. I do actually like this interpretation better than just randomly connecting them and assigning them to another part of the game, however, I'd argue it's still a point to Molten MCI. Remember in that final story, the kids were put together in one coffin and then there was a knock at the door later that night. That is still five things going into one thing, and the creation coming to life and returning to the location is very reminiscent of Molten Freddy finding his way to the back alley of the pizzeria. All in all, while an argument can be made that Candy Cadet is evidence for Molten MCI, it is very generalized and processed evidence that's overall a little too foggy in nature. In terms of the story aspects of this theory, it does kind of work. Remember that whole internal conversation between Baby and the rest of Ennard? There's that one line of, we outnumber you, and also, we found a way to eject you. It's clear as day that this is referring to Circus Baby, but who's actually doing the talking here? Because, for sure, it could just be the other three Funtime animatronics, but it does seem a little weird to consider that the actual animatronics are the ones doing the talking here. Instead, I believe it's more likely this isn't Ennard versus Circus Baby, this is the souls within Ennard versus Elizabeth. The lines seem to imply there are more than one soul in the rest of Ennard, hence it's quite believable that this would be the missing children. The thing that's a little less easy to believe is how the souls even got there in the first place. As I said before, the timeline placement for the events of Sister Location is pretty tricky but I actually believe that the final Tales from the Pizzaplex story, Dittophobia, gave us a better idea on the placement. I made a whole video on this amazing story if you want to watch it afterwards, 
But basically, the FNAF 4 experiments on the kids, which came before Sister Location, seem to have happened for at least a decade, which I would say places it after FNAF 1. I understand some people may disagree with that for various other reasons, but for the sake of this video, we will be proceeding with that conclusion. So we have the souls in the Follow Me mini games in the FNAF 1 location, then we have the souls in the Funtime animatronics in the Sister Location bunker. How? Well, I believe the mini games actually try to tell this story. Why exactly is Afton here at all? What is his purpose for dismantling the animatronics, leaving nothing but their shells? Well, from what we know about remnant science in this universe, metal seems to be a good conductor for souls, and therefore it's clear that the children's souls aren't just in the robots themselves, but in their endoskeletons. That's something I wanted to explicitly mention, because there's actually a reason I'm making this video today. Very recently there was a new finding that I would say is almost damning evidence for Molten MCI. This was found in FNAF VR Help Wanted, a game where, if you recall, Steel Wall Studios said there was still an easter egg that nobody had found. I think this is that easter egg. In the hard mode Ennard level for vent repair, we have the infamous scene where Ennard gets absolutely annihilated by the perfect 72 degrees. But something that we didn't find for four entire years is that in this furnace are four endoskeletons. And not just any old endoskeletons, Endo-01 endoskeletons. Now that's a huge deal because you have to question why and how the animatronic endoskeletons from the FNAF 1 location ended up in a furnace in the sister location bunker. Why? Because if you make it into molten metal, you have liquid souls right into your hands. Maybe not in your hands, but definitely in the scooper. Remember from the Pizzeria Simulator blueprints that this device has a remnant reservoir as well as a remnant injector. This device can be used to put remnant souls into animatronics and it's the very same device that helped fuse Ennard's body with Michael's. What I'm trying to say is that the way the souls were transferred from the FNAF 1 animatronics to the Funtime animatronics is by melting down the very things containing their souls and putting it into the robots. It's also good to note that this is again pretty similar to what happens in the books. So that's the why to this easter egg, but the how is something we've kind of been leading up to this whole video so far. Going back to the Follow Me minigames with this additional context makes things add up a little more. The whole reason Afton dismantled the FNAF 1 animatronics was to get these endoskeletons in the first place. These trips back to Freddy's were just Afton getting soul fuel for his experiments down in the sister location lair, but I'd say this is where most of the flaws with Molten MCI are. Flaw number one, these minigames end with Afton finally getting springlocked and as we know, this room was sealed until Springtrap was discovered again in 2023. If that's the case, how on earth did Afton have any time at all to make any of this happen? It's a good question, honestly, because we do see Afton coming back to the pizzeria again and again in the FNAF 3 minigames, and there's not a whole lot of context on what he's doing, but there's also not a lot of context on the time jumps between each night. And while I don't have a full answer for you on this, I do have a cool easter egg from Sister Location that I genuinely completely forgot about. On night 4 you can hear the two technicians that later get hung talking to one another about Ballora getting scooped. Listen closely. Uh oh. It sounds like someone else is in the building. Shh. Okay, bring her over. Forward. One, one, okay, stop, set it down, watch the step. What happened to it this time? Just seems like these things can't go a day without breaking down. Who knows, it's always the same, man, some kind of hardware malfunction. Well, hey, I have to be somewhere in 15 minutes, and this place gives me the creeps. Can we just get this over with? 
It's all automated. We don't have to be here for it. Just get it on the roads and we can go. It's all automated. We don't have to be here for it. The key part of this conversation to take away is that the technology of the scooper is ridiculous. It can strip out the endoskeletons of the animatronics, put souls in new bodies, and the entire process is automatic. My point is that Afton can literally throw the endoskeletons into the furnace and he's done. Night one, Freddy's endoskeleton goes in. Night two, Bonnie's. Night three, Chica. Night four, Foxy. That's four endoskeletons put into one furnace over four nights. And we don't really know why Afton came back, but I'm assuming it's either for Golden Freddy or for one final scan of the location for parts. Instead, he is met with the souls of the children and ultimately his demise. Hold on a second. If the endoskeletons containing the souls are now in the sister location furnace, then how would they still here to attack Afton? That's right, my friends, we have stumbled onto floor number two. While it's easy to say that all of the souls were taken at this very point in time, that's almost immediately debunked by the fact that the souls are still present outside of the animatronic bodies. Maybe there's some sort of soul splitting going on like we see in the books, but there's nothing really pointing towards that being the case. This, to me, is the element of this whole theory which makes the least sense to me, and to many other theorists out there as well. As I said at the top of this video, there are so many things going for Molten MCI, so much that I believe it's what Scott had intended this whole time. But at the same time, the theory breaks down in quite a few different ways, which makes this quite a tricky argument overall. Floor number three, or to be honest, floor number two and a half because it's more of a side tangent, is where is Golden Freddy's involvement in all of this? There were five children in the missing children's incident, including Cassidy, who possesses Golden Freddy. As we already discussed, Golden Freddy wasn't dismantled with the other animatronics. Being a springlock animatronic, I don't really know how it would be dismantled anyway, as the endoskeleton is attached to the body itself, meaning if Afton wanted to get Cassidy's soul involved, he would have to burn the entire suit. Anyway, it's all good if Cassidy is separated from the rest of the missing children, but then that doesn't give Yendo an explanation. Yendo is essentially sister location stand-in for Golden Freddy, with his name basically standing for Yellow Endo. So you'd think Cassidy is involved here somehow, but clearly that can't be the case. And now, by missing out Cassidy, we've automatically debunked our argument involving Candy Cadet stories of five going into one. It's hard being a FNAF theorist. While we're here debunking things we've already talked about, why don't I also go ahead and mention that it's thundering throughout the entirety of the Follow Me minigames, so it's implied it all takes place in one night. Okay, at the moment it's looking like Molten MCI has its fair share of problems, and this is part of the reason I don't want to try to convince you of either side of the argument today. Instead, what I want to do is spread this information and present the pros and cons so that you can finish this video with confidence in the evidence and the flaws so that you are able to make your own conclusion. But before you do that, there's one more huge thing that I feel the need to mention in this video. What I would say is the crux of how this theory even originated in the first place. The insanity ending of Pizzeria Simulator has us scrolling through these blueprints as aforementioned, while Henry gives us another little monologue. And some of the wording he decides to use is rather interesting. It's only now that I understand the depth of the depravity of this creature, this monster that I unwillingly helped to create. This, of course, is referring to William Afton himself, which is further backed up by the next line. As if what he had already done wasn't enough. He found a new way to desecrate, to humiliate, to destroy. As if the suffering wasn't enough, the loss of innocence, the loss of everything to so many people. Small souls trapped in prisons of my making, now set to new purpose, and used in ways I never thought imaginable. This is where I believe it starts to get a little interesting, because I think this is where he starts referring to the missing children and their families that lost so much to the monster he unwillingly helped to create. Small souls trapped in prisons of my making. That's very clearly talking about children's souls in general. 
Notice how, unlike the completion ending, he doesn't refer to Elizabeth here. He doesn't refer to Charlie. He just talks about small souls trapped in prisons. A little bit like the Candy Cadet story that could be an allegory for the missing children trapped in prisons of animatronic bodies. He lured them all back, back to a familiar place, back with familiar tricks. He brought them all together. Are they still aware? I hope not. It keeps me awake at night. I could make myself sleep, but not yet. Here he refers again to William Afton, bringing the kids back to the pizzerias, a familiar place, bringing all of them together as one. In fact, I'd argue it describes what happens in the Follow Me minigames pretty well, especially with the added context of the next lines. Not until I undo what he has done and heal this wound. A wound first inflicted on me, but then one that I let bleed out to cause all of this. He set some kind of trap. I don't know what it was, but he led them there again. He overpowered them again and he robbed them of the only thing that they had, again. I don't know how those tiny breaths of life came to inhabit those machines, but they will never find rest now, not like this. I have to call them all back, all of them, together in one place. See what I mean? Follow Me was all a trap so that Afton could take all that was left of the already killed children, their mobile animatronic bodies. It's pretty cynical. But my point is, and this is something that birthed this entire theory, is that Henry does talk about the missing children here. Even when talking about a wound first inflicted on him that he let bleed out onto others, why would he talk about the missing children if they weren't at all relevant in this game? Why would there be any talk of the missing children at all if there wasn't a connection to the game? In fact, now we're at this point, I feel it's necessary to say who else would possess Golden Freddy at all. We know there are multiple souls within him. He even has a line where he talks about one big happy family. One big happy family. Knock knock. I'm here. So who else could this be? It just makes sense in terms of the themes of the story for this one animatronic to represent the missing children. But single-handedly, the one quote that's always on my mind during discussion of this entire topic is one of the final lines of the completion ending. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die, no one was there to lift you up into their arms the way you lifted others into yours. And then what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. It's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms. Pause right there. Notice anything suspicious about this screenshot? Okay, let's run it back. When Henry here talks about his daughter, his daughter from two different mini games depicting the same event shows. And then when he asks what became of her, the puppet shows up in the background. All of that clearly confirms for us that Henry's daughter, Charlie, possesses the puppet. But then when Henry says, it's time to rest for you and for those you have carried in your arms, a screenshot from the Give Gifts, Give Life mini game shows up. That's an odd little detail, but it's there, and it adds a lot more context to his words. So when he's talking about others that he is saving along with his daughter, he means those four kids. Notice how we're talking about four again, these four missing children who reside in none other than Molten Freddy. And if we want to take this one step further, what does Michael say after his quest in the sister location bunker? They were all there. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. <laughs> and I found her. I put her back together, just like you asked me to. Now think about that one. They were all there. All of the missing children were in the Funtime animatronics, and he put them together. If you asked me, there's a lot more evidence for Molten MCI 
then flaws going against it. But it is important to at least recognize that these problems do exist. I feel like these days a lot of FNAF theorists find it difficult to admit that their theories have issues. To be clear here, theories having problems is completely fine. That's why it's a theory. It allows for us to build upon it and create better and better theories. After all, Molten MCI was built upon one idea and that idea failed. Then we took that idea and twisted it a bit so that it would fit better. And so on and so forth until we've gotten to this point where we found evidence that seems like a pretty clear nod to confirmation of the theory. Yet even with this proof, four years later, the theory has problems. And that's the beauty of the discussions that come with theorizing. That's why sometimes I absolutely love reading the comment section. Because you guys have incredible ideas and wild connections that I never even considered. So if you do have any thoughts about any of this that you'd like to share, be sure to write a comment because I'll definitely be reading it. Just remember one thing, be respectful to others while theorizing because that makes everything so much easier for everyone. Here's a quick reminder that this huge video was sponsored by G Fuel and I really don't think a lot of this would have been possible without them. So be sure to treat yourself today by popping over to their website and using the code OZONEYT for 20% off on all products. Believe it or not, I'm not the only person on YouTube who has been talking about Molten MCI. There's many videos from a whole range of creators on the platform and I'm going to be uploading a reaction to some of these videos very soon. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye out. Thank you all so much for watching. It means the absolute world to me that you make it all the way to the end of these massive videos because they take so much time and so much effort and that just makes it all worth it. Be sure to check out some of my other videos on the screen and I'll hopefully see you in another one soon.